I'm a big fan. You are a holistic cardiologist, and I've never heard of other cardiologists being referred to as holistic cardiologists. What is that? And did you receive additional training for that? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, There is a joke. I'm a holistic cardiologist because my patients show up with a whole list of problems and a whole list of medications they want to get off. But they're actually, uh, I had an interest in this a decade ago, and I did some research. I actually found out, it took a year to find out there was a course that was university credentialed, you know, and if I was going to do it, I wanted to do it. Now at the back of the TV guide where I was drawing a pirate. So I spent a whole year while I was practicing, but weekends, nights, doing, you know, over 100 hours of classroom lecture training, Georgetown University, uh, South Florida University in Tampa, and graduated that late 2012. And then, you know, a student for life, because I lecture for that academic organization now. So you try putting together an hour lecture you've never given before. It's 10 hours of work. And just always reading and with my involvement in social media, a lot of that is posting science. Some of it is posting a joke now and then. Uh, But anyway, so I'm always, always reading and usually pretty much know the latest and the greatest. And, you know, you got to keep things change, you know, omega-3, good, bad. Oh, my God. You could, you know, punch it out like those little uh, plastic uh, toys that we had as kids kind of thing because it goes back and forth. But we try and, you know, mainly just provide credible information for patients to feel good. But a, a holistic cardiologist, when you see a patient, you're asking about their diet and their lifestyle, yeah. correct? Well, I'm asking, you know, literally, exactly, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, what they drink, when they eat, first meal, last meal, highest weight, lowest weight. Uh, do they put chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp parts. I want to know what time they go to bed, how many times they're up to pee, what time they wake up, what they take. Do they wear blue light blocking glasses? Uh, are they using, you know, sleep aids or prescription drugs? Dental health, glass visit, root canals, you know, on and on and on. Because all that stuff really matters. And yeah. sometimes, you know, it's ignored and not emphasized. So, you know, it, it, and that's just part of it. Relationships, social support, sexual health, stress yeah. levels. What, what are you coping? Are you coping with tequila? Are you coping with breathing or music or nature or Drinking your tequila in nature, that's a way to cope too. <laughs> and that all has an impact on heart health. Yeah, and overall health, but yeah, it overall. does have an impact on heart health. Even yeah, where so, you live, there is some data, you know, you can almost go zip code by zip code and see different levels of heart health. But a lot of it is water quality, air quality, access yeah. to green spaces, and access to good farmers markets, fresh markets. It varies a lot, community to community, even though a lot of stuff gets delivered nowadays. So. Part of my job for people living in rural areas is telling them you can order healthy food online, thrivemarket.com, you know, maybe Amazon Prime uh, and all, and at least get through some of the limitation that you don't have a whole food or a fresh time or something down the street. You still can get amazingly good stuff. So a few months back, my mom went to a cardiologist, a renowned cardiologist here in Houston, Texas, that is chief of cardiology of a major uh, hospital center. And he didn't ask about her diet. He didn't ask about her lifestyle. He put her on statins. You got it. And so my question for you is, what does someone do when they can't get to Michigan to see you? Yeah. Is there an association to look up doctors like you or yeah. how do you? And, and and this, I saw my dad the other day. My dad is on 15 pills a day. He has so many underlying conditions and he puts all of his faith in his doctor, just like my mom. So a lot of the encouragement that I've given for years for lifestyle has kind of fallen on deaf ears because my mom and dad look at doctors as if they say it, it must be gold, but right. they don't ever counsel them on nutrition. So again, is there an association? What, what can patients do? Yeah, it's tough because, I mean, you know, I come in part from the plant-based world, uh, a world of research and publications and cooking and recipes, but it's mm-hmm. quite science-based. And, you know, you can go, but to t- answer your question, there's so few holistic cardiologists, there is no association society. Um, there is a good one. 
uh, plant-based cardiologist in Houston. I'll give a shout out to a gentleman named Baxter Montgomery. And he actually has a cafe in his office. You're not gonna find too many doctors that have that plant-based. Um, there's another plant-based cardiologist in Houston. I'm blanking on the name, but yeah, and there is a website, plantbaseddocs.com. But plant-based is only one part of it. And sure. it's only one part of my toolkit, my switch blades. I mean, integrative medicine, holistic medicine isn't completely and always overlapping with plant-based. Uh, a plant-based doctor will talk about food, but may not talk about dental health and stress levels and yoga, or may, depends yeah. on their background. Um, you know, you can try and do your own reading. Uh, again, plant-based, you go to forksoverknives.com. There's something called plantritionproject.com, my website, drjoelcon.com. I do telehealth consults. They're really, it's just to answer your mom's question. What's disappointing is there is science. I'll assume your mother has never had a heart attack or a stent. No. So basically you're saying take a drug for the rest of your life without any nutrition advice, which some people relate to saying here, take chemotherapy for the rest of your life, even though you don't have fortunately a diagnosis of cancer. Well, I guess you could call broccoli a form of chemotherapy. I take broccoli the rest of your life might be a real good cancer reduction program, but we're not talking that. When you're talking statins, it's a low side effect rate, but it's absolutely a real side effect rate. So there has been science for 20 years, but it's all sort of popped up in the last two years. American Heart Association would tell your mom, go get a heart calcium CT scan for $75, comes back good, you don't need a statin. That's science, that's the American Heart Association. Now the Canadian Heart Association, early this year, same thing. Something called the National Lipid Association, same thing. Mm -hmm. I have to my right, about six feet away, I have all these statements so that people know this isn't just me questioning your need for a statin. This has mm -hmm. actually made it to main time. But mm -hmm. how long does it take societal recommendations from major medical societies to get in the exam room with your mother and the chief who is just, you, you know what? You write a statin, you're out of the room in 30 seconds, you're on to the next patient. You want to tell a patient about oatmeal, salads, bean chili, and you know, um, eating papaya and, and mangoes, you're taking you know a few minutes, or even just to write a referral to a dietitian takes a few minutes. So it's fast-paced medicine. It's not the best medicine. Would you recommend diet before you would recommend before you would prescribe statins? That's actually in the guidelines with almost a uh, rare exception. If you had a heart attack, you probably should be on a statin for a little while, but somebody ought to teach you how to change your lifestyle and maybe you can get off the statin or reduce the statin. But the guidelines, what doctors are supposed to pay attention to, sure. say lifestyle change, TLC, therapeutic lifestyle change for three to six months. And if you're unable to lower your cholesterol, consider medication. Yeah, that is what's supposed to be done. Yeah. And I had a husband-wife couple here. Uh, they flew up from South Carolina earlier this week. They did the exact same lifestyle change about seven years ago. Husband dropped his cholesterol over 100 points on a whole food plant-based diet, and she dropped her cholesterol about 20 points. She was wow. frustrated. And there is variability, but find sure. out if you're the 100-point cholesterol dropper, you might well be. According to the American Heart Association, between 2015 and 2018, 126.9 million American adults had some form of cardiovascular disease. Yeah. We we know that 54.1% of males, more than ha almost half of all, more than half of all males age 20 and older have some form of cardiovascular disease. Why do so many Americans have cardiovascular diseases and what are cardiovascular diseases? Right. Yeah. A big chunk of those huge numbers. Not that many people have had heart attacks, bypass or stents. A huge part of that is high blood pressure, which is considered a cardiovascular disease. Number one cause of death in the world is actually high blood pressure worldwide because it leads to stroke, heart attack, bypass, amputation, erectile dysfunction, aneurysms that rupture. So I call my patients, I'm actually fairly blunt with them that they're completely amateurs if they don't have a home blood pressure cuff at home, which is why I carry extra ones in my office, because that can be life saving and life altering. Um, beyond that, the most common is clogged arteries, hardening the arteries, tiny little model that's 
nice clean artery, although that's a big one that's bigger than your heart. And uh, that's what a clogged old artery is. And that is about roughly 80% what you do with smoking, exercise, food, stress, sleep, and 20% genetics. There are people that really lead healthy lifestyles, but they inherit it. And most of that can be measured in lab work or spit. Uh, if you really want to know if you inherited, you know, kind of a higher risk profile, if you have that father that had the heart attack at age 47, or, you know, your uh, sister or brother had a stent at age, you know, 39, you probably should get some genetic testing for that person as well as yourself, unless, you know, three pack a day smoker eating bacon, breakfast, lunch, and dinner it may be quite obvious why, but about 80%. Are you eating five servings a day of fruits and vegetables, brightly colored, whole food, unprocessed, learn mm -hmm. how to make a couple things at home. If you can open a couple cans of beans and tomato soup and spices and maybe cut up a sweet potato and celery, you've got some kind of chili. I mean, this stuff doesn't have to be elegant, but it's yeah. very healthy and very filling. So you've mentioned 80%. The CDC states that 80% of cardiovascular diseases, including heart disease and stroke, are preventable, are they also reversible? Yeah, you know, you, you like everything, and Ben Franklin, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, it's very true. Um, it's easier to start at age 18, 20, 25, or even younger than that, with fitness, with not smoking, with eating a healthier than average diet. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can eat a whole food, plant-based sort of perfect diet, which I've done now for more than 40 years, and it works fine. Um, but if you've already, you know, got evidence by a CT scan of aging arteries or by a heart attack, a stroke, a bypass, a guy with erectile dysfunction, that's usually blood flow, blood vessel problems. Yeah, these things you may not, you may not be able to go from an artery that's really sick to your 15 year old artery, but you can reverse plaque. We do a test. I moved my pile because I got a new printer today. We do an ultrasound of the carotid arteries to the brain with digital software. And when we do it a year later, we see a lot of people that have less plaque than their first wow. trip here, but wow. they're doing different lifestyle steps. Maybe they're taking different program and we're watching it go away, sometimes completely go away. So we're watching. If young guys, I've talked to many guys on college campuses and guys in their 20s and 30s. And a common thread is most of these men that I've talked to don't get annual checkups. Right. If they were to begin to get annual checkups consistently, what is there something that young men could could because obviously their doctors or I believe a lot of their doctors won't be asking them about their diet and their lifestyle. Right. Let's hope they do. But are there numbers? Are there tests in an annual checkup that young men can become educated on so that they have an understanding about their heart? Yeah, and it's a great question. And they really don't need much medical care. I mean, certainly by about age 20, you should have somebody check your blood pressure once. It could be at a drugstore if you, or you could get a cuff. Uh, it could be at okay. the dentist. Some dentists uh, do that. You should probably know your cholesterol because one in 250 people, which isn't that uncommon, um, have a genetically high LDL cholesterol. And, you know, if you're 20 years old and your cholesterol is 400, you might want to see somebody that specializes in it. That's not common, but one in 250 is not that unusual. You might want to check your blood sugar, particularly if you're carrying a lot of extra weight. You know, by the time somebody's diagnosed with adult diabetes, which is tens of millions of Americans, they've probably had it creeping up for a decade. You'd rather catch it at the beginning of the decade it's already damaging your body by the time the doctor says, here's a diet, here's a program, or here's a pill, or here's an injection. Um, and you don't have to repeat that all that often. I've been big, there's a kind of cholesterol you can inherit from mom and dad called lipoprotein little a. And instead of affecting one in every 250 people, this unusual cholesterol affects one in every four people. So wow. very common. And in Europe, it's now the new norm, you're 20 years old, your doctor's going to draw that blood test on you once, lipoprotein and then lowercase a. I've written a book on the topic, the only book uh, ever written, uh, but it'll be a very common conversation coming up in the next five years because drug companies are developing expensive drugs. But, but right now, that's what we need. That cholesterol doesn't respond well 
the lifestyle. The regular cholesterol can respond well to lifestyle. So yes, but really blood pressure alone, there's a lot of 24 year olds and their blood pressure is 160 over 88 and they have no clue. That's yeah. starting to age your body. That's why 38 year olds have heart attacks in part. Yeah. And obviously, quit smoking, quit smoking, quit smoking. And we see that almost half of American men over the age of 20 are obese. We see that 70% of Americans, over 70% are overweight and obese. So that leads to my question about younger men. I've talked to guys in their 20s already taking erectile dysfunction medications yeah. and more men in their 30s and 40s. What role does diet play in that? A lot of men don't understand that connection between diet and erectile dysfunction. Yeah, you know, it, it's diet, blood pressure, diet, blood sugar, diet, blood cholesterol, diet, damaging the lining of your arteries throughout your body, including your sex organs. And it's been studied. You have one sloppy hamburger. It seems to alter and injure your arteries for a few hours. You have one milkshake. These are studies that have been done. It alters your arteries. You have one sausage egg McMuffin, famous study wow. called the McDonald's study alters your arteries for hours. Now, if you do that day after day after day, it's gonna to start to alter your arteries permanently. Um, I'd refer anybody to go watch a very popular documentary called The Game Changers Movie, and a very powerful example in that movie with a urologist named, uh, my friend in LA, I'm blanking for a minute, uh, it doesn't matter, but it shows the power of a healthy meal or an unhealthy meal on male sexual health in three young athletes at University of Southern California, I think they were at. Uh, so, you know, it, it makes a huge difference. Actually, scientifically, fruit, whole fruit, is the best food you can eat for sexual health. That just comes up in studies. Grab an apple, grab an orange, grab a banana, grab berries, grab watermelon, uh, mango, papaya, it doesn't matter. But it's not, you know, sausage, it's not bacon, it's not cheese omelets, it's not french fries, it's not you know, shakes and malts and burgers. So there's no doubt about it that diet can affect a man's erections. Yeah, and that is one area you get a guy to start eating better, cut back on the processed junk, up the whole foods, the plant foods, a big salad every day. And uh, they may not need any pills anymore. They may get their mojo back. And, you know, and it also leads to firmer I erections. I deal with so many guys that I had an erection last when you know, uh, Ronald Reagan was president. I mean, it's like, holy man, that's like cut out a whole lot of that male life. So, you know, yeah. be, be aware that your decisions today are going to affect your performance in a year or two, for sure. Well, that's great. So I want to ask you um, one more thing, because uh, I know that you have to go. Um, you mentioned that test. You, I've heard you tweet it or I've seen you tweet it and I've heard you talk about it a lot. There is a very inexpensive scan that someone can have. And what is that again? Yeah, it's, it was on my Instagram post this morning, but um, let me get a picture. It's called a heart calcium CT scan. This is an example in my practice brochure. But you see a yellow arrow pointing to a white blob, which is a CT x-ray of the heart, the lungs, the bones. The bones should be bright white. Those are the ribs and the breastbone. But that yellow arrow is pointing to a heart artery that is bone-like. That's why we call it hardening of the artery. So a heart calcium CT scan takes about 10 seconds to hold your breath. In Cleveland, it's free in hospitals. In D Detroit, it's $75. Some places, it's still a couple hundred. But uh, yeah. you do want to do that CT scan. If you've got like a really great worry, do it at 40 to 45. If you've been living that super clean life, maybe 45 to 50, but genetics can still have an impact. So you wanna come out zero. Zero is great news, zero is great arteries. I'm a zero at age 62. You wanna maintain those perfect arteries. Okay, so if, it, if you're in your 40s and you've spent the last few decades yo-yo dieting, you've been overweight or right. obese, you've lost some weight, you've gotten you know up and down, it's a test that would be a good investment in your health to, to get that number. Yeah, sadly, insurance companies rarely pay for it. In Texas, your great state, yeah. they usually do pay for it at age 50, but okay. you still might want to move it up a bit if you've, you know, previous smoker cholesterol issues. They come at you with the prescription for the cholesterol medicine, like your mom, 
your mom might say, well, I'm going with the American Heart Association. I'm going to get that CT scan. And if I'm a zero, rip up that prescription. Finally, what is your parting message for men for Men's Health Month? What is, do you have a, a message that you want men to really marinate on? Yeah, you know, men are, they need to be slapped. Men, they, 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 they just, they're lethargic. They're slightly dumb. If I write a post on men's health, it gets one-tenth the views of a post on broccoli. I mean, men are dumber than broccoli. No disrespect. I, I is one too. But, uh, you know, I live by this little hashtag, test not guess. Don't assume. You feel good today. Tomorrow could be a really bad day. Get checked. Blood pressure, blood cholesterol, blood sugar, advanced numbers. Get the CT scan. Friggin' eat a salad. Friggin' put down the burger and learn how to make a bean chili that's nice and healthy. Get your shoes on, take a walk, put the cigar and the cigarettes down. You know, when you're a 62-year-old man who hasn't had an erection in a decade, who feels awful every day, uh, you know, hardly can poop once a day, it's not fun. And by that point, it's hard to reverse in that process. So, you know, make better decisions in your 20s and 30s. Dr. Khan, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All the work you do. Till next time. Thank you.